Hey everyone, welcome to the Purple People Podcast. I'm Kyle West alongside Adam Carlson. How you doing today, Adam? Oh, I'm doing great. How about you? I am just doing fantastic, enjoying the nice weather, sitting here at home, ready to talk about the Minnesota Vikings. That's a good thing to do, you know, I like doing that too. Yep, um, we got our top story for the week. Um, Adrian Peterson has been activated off the pup list. Um, he's going to be coming back, I believe they said, on Tuesday is when he can participate in full practices. Um, what do you think of this? You know, um, I'm kind of surprised that they activated him so early. Um, I kind of thought they were going to keep him on the list a little bit longer, you know, let him do his private workouts and stuff, because I am still that skeptical guy that I don't want to see something happen. I mean, this guy, sure, he had, you know, a huge injury, but he's still the future of the franchise, in my opinion. I don't think that changes that at all. Um, the Vikings are going to need to lean on him for the next several seasons. And if this ends up being something like a, a, just a premature thing that they did, I'm going to be very disappointed. Well, you know, uh, being active or not being active on that list, I don't think it really affects what the Vikings' overall plan for him is. Uh, right. I, you're, you're not going to see him playing in preseason, maybe even at all, until the the final game against the Texans, ironically enough. Um, <laughs> and uh, come week one, I, I think you'll see only just a handful of of carries from him. Um, they're they're, they're going to be easing him into it and taking him off from the PUP list is a great way, um, while they're still up in Mankato, they're up there for another week, it's a great way for them to let him kind of, now he can come out to the field and he can have pads on and he's not maybe necessarily taking snaps like what Gerhardt would be, but he can right. be out there and he can go through the motions and it's just another step to getting him back eventually on the team. So you don't think we'll see him in preseason action then until game four, the last one, right? Game game four is what I'm thinking. Um, see, because I, I have a feeling that they're going to get him involved in week three. You know, even if it's just, you know, five carries, I, I think that they're going to try to do something I don't think they really need to do. I don't think they're going to need to get him back up to game speed, you know, that by easing him in like that. I think Adrian Peterson's one of those guys that he only has one speed, and that's go. Yeah, no, you're correct. Um, if you listen to the interview that they posted on Vikings.com, uh, he uh, he he uh, worked out at one of the walkthroughs um, with the team, and he admitted that he was roaring and ready to go at that walkthrough. That he was running way too quick through it. Um, so he he's very motivated and very much ready to be back on the team. Um, he will he will be smart. I think you got to give him the benefit of the doubt. If he starts getting out there in these practices and his knee doesn't feel right, he is not going to risk re-injuring it, I, I don't think. Um, it's his body. He's going to know right. what his limits are. But I worry about that with a guy who wants to push it so hard. I mean, knowing your limits and wanting to do things are two things that kind of contrast each other so much. And uh, I know we've talked about it in other shows about, you know, rushing him back too soon and all that. But um, he, getting him off the, that active pup list had to happen. Um, the fact it happened now really isn't that huge of a deal, as long as it's not foreshadowing them trying to put too much on him too early. That's all I'm trying to say. Which is a really good point. Um, I think it's it's a big boost to the offense, too, just even knowing that uh, Adrian is going to be out there practicing with us in whatever capacity that he's doing. He is the biggest star on the team. He's the focal point right. of our offense and the face of the franchise. So just knowing that, hey, he's going to be out there with the team, that should make everyone practice harder and play harder and just maybe be that little extra bit of motivation that the team needs um, for the uh, next preseason game against Buffalo and uh, moving forward with the uh, regular season. That's true. It's true. I mean, make no mistakes. 
Uh, I know you hear a lot that this team has been built around Christian Ponder. You know, to give him weapons, give him an O-line. That's not true. Christian Ponder is there to be built around Adrian Peterson. Exactly, and if that's not what the Vikings are doing, uh, they got their head up their ass because this team should be <laughs> built around Adrian Peterson, and that's that's it starts and stops with Adrian. Exactly. Um, we probably will not see him. I'm going to say there's a very, very, very slim chance of seeing him in the next preseason game against Buffalo. I don't expect him to play against Buffalo. No. I don't expect him to um, even come out against the uh, San Diego Chargers. I'm thinking the Houston Texans. You will see him, um, and that's the, the final preseason game. I think he'll come out, and he will only have um, anywhere between 10 to 15 snaps at the beginning of the game and then I think he'll he'll come out and they will be first down snaps like you won't see him in any kind of short yardage where he's right. really got to use his power like it's going to be get him in first down get him in some open spaces let him let him get going that way uh, my magic number, as um, as I've said to Kyle numerous times already today, is eight. I'd like to see him in that Houston game get eight carries. Because I want to see him, you know, getting back in that football mentality. And I know he already has it, but physically, you know, physically and mentally are two kind of different things. And um, to get in that football rhythm is is important. It's definitely important. Um, speaking of rhythm, uh, we actually had our first uh, preseason game uh, against the San Francisco 49ers, and uh, there were times where the team looked like they were starting to get in rhythm, and then yeah. there were other times where they were just completely out of sync. Uh, so let's do a little bit of a recap here. Uh, what were your thoughts? Definitely. What were your thoughts on the uh, the Vikings as a whole in their first preseason outing? Well, um, let, let's let's talk first about who was there and who wasn't there. Yep. Now, this Vikings preseason game, you're looking at an offense with a starting offense that didn't have, you know, their two most versatile weapons. Percy Harvin didn't play, and Adrian Peterson didn't play. So you're looking at an offense where uh, Stephen Burton stepped in for Percy Harvin. And uh, most of the first team reps for the running back were handled by Toby Gerhardt. So that said, uh, this team still was without um, John Carlson, the tight end, too, because of injury. And, you know, so it really wasn't the whole Vikings team we're going to see. Uh, they didn't give away a whole lot too early, which is good, especially considering these two teams will meet again later in the season. Uh, but uh, I got a good feeling from the starting offense. Uh, they seemed to move the chains. They didn't get in the end zone. But they did get in field goal range, and I was very impressed with special teams. Uh, you, we saw uh, Blair Walsh make really good kicks. I'm sure none of them were really you know, the huge 50-yard boomers that we saw in practice. But I'm excited to just see consistency. That's what I want to see. The big leg's the bonus. Now, um, defensively, I was really concerned about them stopping the run. I liked what I saw from the first team about um, the man coverage skills, the you know, ability to play the man with the football in the air. But then uh, the tackling, when you had to take an angle on a player, I saw a lot of bad angles being taken and a lot of holes that shouldn't have been there, and that was frustrating. But again, the first team defense was without Antoine Winfield. They were without Jared Allen. They were without Kevin Williams. So that also makes a huge difference there yeah um defensively this team scares the heck out of me and not in a good way um i we, we've made improvements over over last season and um I, uh, hold on i guess before i go any further i want to take a step back here and i want to say it is the first preseason game right um, we've got what 93 people on the roster right now a lot of the players that we seen out there were guys that are probably not going to be making the team because it's right. the first preseason they're putting players in because they want to see what they do in uh 
a game time situation as to whether or not they're going to be worth a, a second look and possibly making the roster. So we shouldn't get too worked up over what we've seen, but at the same time, uh, this defense, I, I what 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 got me the most is uh, the 49ers backup quarterback comes out there on the field, Colin Kaepernick. And he scrambles for, like, an 80-yard touchdown rush. Right. And there's only one or two quarterbacks in the NFL that should be ever be rushing for that kind of yardage. And that's Michael Vick or Tim Tebow. Not calling, <laughs> not back up Colin Kaepernick, okay? Um, I, I don't know what happened on that play but it had to just be people completely out of assignment that should not happen that that scares me that there were people on the team that were that far out of assignment that they let him rush for that big of a gain now i'm going to step in for a second here okay and um i'm going to say that I am a Colin Kaepernick fan. I wanted Minnesota to draft him. He was the one that I was looking at in that draft with Christian Ponder. Um, I have watched videos of him. His arm's a cannon. Um, his leg speed is what he was known for in college. I mean, he, he took off on runs like that quite often. So it didn't surprise me to see him do it. But what surprised me were the bad angles and the holes that were, were there that shouldn't have been there. That was what surprised me. And when I saw Chris Cook chasing him and he couldn't catch him, to me, that really just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, you get worried. Um, even though, like I say, it is the first preseason game, you still, you, you just wonder. It's like the, the, they should be more fundamentally sound. Because even if you're a fourth string player that might not be making the Vikings roster, you're still in the National Football League. So that should theoretically make you one of the best football players just in the United States because, you know, you're playing in the NFL. Right. Now, um, I'd like to also, in the defense of the Vikings, although um, I know that it probably doesn't mean a lot, uh, the, the Vikings lost a uh, nose tackle, Latroy Guion, early in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, he sprained his uh, right PCL very early and... You know that that made it so that there was only one starter that was still on the offensive line, or on the defensive line. And that was Brian Robinson. Yep. And like you say, this was a Minnesota starting defense um, that was without Jared Allen, Kevin Williams, and Antoine Winfield. And right. I think that uh, this should go a long way as to hopefully getting people to stop saying that we should trade Jared Allen. Or we should trade Antoine Winfield or Kevin Williams, because clearly we are rebuilding, but these guys are a cornerstone to the team. And you can, Definitely. yeah, you can write up, oh, you should trade Jared Allen for Calvin Johnson or, you know, whatever it is <laughs> you want to say. I, and no, no, don't do, you've seen what the defense looks like without him. We need these players on the team, okay? Well, one of the main things to remember, too, is that, uh, you know, guys like Jared Allen, you know, and uh, Kevin Williams, when they can get that push inside. Mm -hmm. that is, that's helping out those young corners on the outside because he's got to get that ball out fast. You know, he might make a bad read. He might overthrow or underthrow a ball. And that, that helps out those young corners so much. And this team is trying to get younger, especially in that secondary. Mm -hmm. And when you can have pass pressures there to help and you can clog up that middle, it's just a way to help everybody out. I mean, it's a win-win situation. What did you think of uh, of uh, Harrison Smith? Um, to be honest, I I liked what I saw from him, but to me it wasn't spectacular. Um, he looked like he wanted to play. He looked like he wanted to hit. Um, to be honest, I really want to see him work with the first team in the next preseason game because I want to see how it works out with you know with that group of guys uh, because I do want to see more from him yeah Harrison and I think part of the reason why you would say that maybe he looked a little vanilla in this first game is because Minnesota was just running a base defense 
they right. I mean they were not running like what his full assignments are going to be on the field. So that's why you've seen him just kind of pulled clear back in coverage and just kind of playing the middle of the field and not really doing too much. Um, there was one time where the 49ers went to run like a a wide receiver sweep and Harrison picked it up and he uh, he blitzed the guy. And uh, he oh, yeah. he hit him for a one yard loss on that play. <laughs> that was the only time that the 49ers attempted to rush the ball that Minnesota actually stopped them for either no gain or negative yards. The only time, and that was Harrison Smith. In my opinion, well, in my oh, opinion, Harrison needs to be with the first team starting defense. We yes. tr- we traded up to get him for a reason, okay? Get him get him out there. I don't understand what Frazier is trying to do by saying that <laughs> he needs to earn a spot on the team. No, Frazier, it's it's dumb. People want to like him as a coach, and we want to see him succeed. But it's dumb, idiotic things like that. Like, okay, we're gonna trade up for Harrison Smith into the first round. But then we're going to say that he needs to earn his spot on the team. It's like, just give it to him. Just get him out there and get him working with it. Because maybe you're killing the kid's confidence. Maybe he's thinking, am I doing something wrong? Why am I working with the second and third string Minnesota right. team? Like, but just just put him out there with it. Like, what do you have to lose? Now the bigger knock on Harrison Smith wasn't his uh, his ability to blitz or pick up uh, running plays. It was his coverage. He was considered a liability in coverage, and during the game, I didn't see that. Um, it, he looked much more improved from the reports that I've seen of his poor footwork and things like that. He seemed to know his position, where he had to be, and to me, that was a huge improvement and one of the things I wanted to see. But I do want to see him working with that first team. I do want to see him out there. And I do want to see him making hits. Speaking of making hits, uh, your favorite, one of your favorite players there, the uh, Nigerian Mack Truck, he uh, had himself a good game. Yeah, Solomon Aluminium, the Nigerian Mack Truck. He got himself an interception. Um, the ball, It was on a deflected pass that kind of, one of those lucky things that it just like flew right up in the air in front of him. And <laughs> at so we'll still take it. And he caught it. But hey, you know what? Definitely after the season that we had last year, guys, an interception is an interception. I don't care if it's Christian That's Ballard cool. out there accidentally <laughs> catching an interception. I mean, we will take it. Uh, he needs to be further up on the, the depth chart, I think, too. But um, there's another guy, too, that's battling for a position there. And uh, Adi Cole also looked really good. Yeah, he did. Um, he had the sack that he recorded. Um, I, I was impressed to see Audie, Audie do that. A lot of people are uh, saying that he looked like Clay Matthews out there. <laughs> oh, man. I, I don't Not want to... any of our players to look like Green Bay Packers, but uh, <laughs> we, we will take the production if he, can, if he can get that kind of production out of him. Yeah, we'll definitely take that. Yeah, I, I hate making comparisons like that, but I just thought that was a funny one. Yeah. Um, I, all I want to say is that I like what I'm seeing from him so far in preseason. It looks like he's putting the work in, and then he's learning everything, and I'm just excited to see more from him. Uh, were there any players that really disappointed you? Oh, players that disappointed me. Um, I would say that our entire receiving core as a whole I was pretty disappointed with. Now, there were a few yeah. guys that I think stepped up that made plays. Um, you seen Stephen Burton uh, showed that he, he's making a really strong case for why right. he should be on this team. I'm convinced that, that Stephen Burton will make it. One of the things I was really impressed with Stephen Burton is that um, through the last couple seasons here with the Vikings, he's been working on the outside, you know, mm-hmm. fighting for one of those positions on the outside. And he started uh, in Percy Harvin's spot. Yeah. So he was, he was lining up in the slot. He was doing a whole bunch of different things. And he had that big 52-yard catch that... To be honest, uh, you know, if Ponder probably would have put a little more juice on it, it probably would have been gone. And that's what this offense lacked all of last season. Oh, excuse me. Was the ability for a receiver to go down the field and make a 52-yard catch. So 
I mean, and that was what I think we were hoping to see from Jerome Simpson. And yeah. I was a little disappointed that he didn't get going. And I have a point that I kind of want to make about Jerome. Um, you, you, I've, I've heard Minnesota talking a bit about reeling him back in the right. in the preseason because they got to figure out well who's going to step up and take his place during that three game suspension. Uh, I I don't agree with that at all. Jerome no. needs to be on the field as much as possible because he needs to get in sync with Christian Ponder. We don't need to worry about the three games that he's not with the team. We need to right. worry about the the preceding games when he comes back after his suspension. We cannot afford to have Jerome Simpson suspended for three weeks and then he comes back to the team and he's got to fart around for another three weeks afterward getting up to speed and in sync with Christian Ponder. He, he well, needs to get NFL, going right now. The NFL has a depth chart for a reason. When one guy can't play, you go to the next guy on the depth chart. Huh? That's what it's all about. And there's no reason to take precautions, you know. Be like, oh, we got to prepare the number two guy on the depth chart as a number one this week. No. You prepare the number one as a number one. You prepare the number two as a number two. There's no reason to be, you know, pulling people around like that. You're completely right. Yeah. And uh, I, I guess real quick, like a point that I want to make, and I'm going to paraphrase um, something I heard Paul Allen say, because I agree with him 100%. And uh, Paul Allen said that it's a rebuilding process that Minnesota is in, and one of the things that the fans are going to have to deal with this season is we do not have a Calvin Johnson lined up on the outside for Minnesota. We don't have it. We hope that no. maybe someone like Stephen Burton can turn into that. We hope that Jerome Simpson can turn into that. We don't have it. That One of the things that we're going to be doing in next year's draft is hopefully getting our version of Calvin Johnson on the outside of the field. So how hard do we want to be on the guys that we have currently on the roster for not being able to do that? I, I don't know. Do you do you really want to yell at Michael Jenkins? Because Michael Jenkins is <laughs> not that guy. You, you know no. what I'm saying? So right. we can yell until we're blue in the face about not having the greatest of receivers. Which, and I do think we have good receivers. But, we're good. But we just don't have that number one guy on the team yet. We can yell about that until we're blue in the face, but it's not going to change the fact that it's a rebuilding process. You know what yeah, I'm saying? They're, they're good receivers, but they're not great wide receivers. Yeah. This, this team is working with a lot of average or slightly above average players. No great or, you know, well, aside from Percy Harvin, he's pretty great. Well, yeah, Percy's going to be great. and Well, Percy is great, and he wasn't playing this week. And I think uh, Jarius Wright has just a lot of potential to do really good things yes. for Minnesota. Um, an, another point that I want to make as relates to the receivers, when Joe Webb was in the game, he wasn't giving them opportunities to really do anything. Joe no. Webb, I don't know what happened to him, but he looked just completely lost yeah. and out of he his did. element. Uh, he, it seemed like he had no confidence, and I know the O-line was not good. I know that he lost contain, but that's one of the things about Joe Webb that is supposed to be the magic, you know? He's supposed to be able to make plays with his feet and then with his arm, or, you know, or make just plays with his feet. And there were so many times that he got caught in the backfield or had to throw the ball away or got caught for a weird uh, grounding the ball penalty. And to be honest, you know, stuff like that hurts a team more than it helps. And I, I, I was just really disappointed with Joe Webb's play. I was disappointed that he was in there for, I don't know, what, the entire... He was in there for almost two quarters, was it two wasn't quarters? he? two quarters? I want to say two qu I was going to say a quarter and a half, but I think he was in there for almost two quarters. They didn't yeah, move, the, they didn't move the ball at all. And you can say that, no, he, he did not have good protection when he was on the field, but... Joe Webb didn't have good protection when he was playing last year when Christian Ponder was hurt. 
and he was right. still able to move the ball and do certain things, and I didn't see any of that. Now, I am a really big Joe Webb fan, but one of the things that I will definitely admit about the guy is there, when he is on, he is locked in, and he can be a, a good quarterback. When he is not, right. boy, you better watch out, because he channels his <laughs> inner Rex Grossman and just stinks up the field. <laughs> not not All quite right, that. He's a little bit more mobile than what Rex Grossman can be. That's a bad analogy. <laughs> Yeah, Everyone, I was joking, don't jump on me in the Facebook group about, oh, you know about that. I wasn't actually comparing him to Rex Grossman. <laughs> uh, there's two other guys that I kind of wanted to talk about before we moved on to talking about the next preseason game. Okay. And the first is my boy, Rhett Ellison. Rhett. <laughs> now, he looked fantastic. He was hauling in passes, picking up first downs. I was loving everything I saw from him. He was blocking. He was doing great. And I was watching the live stream of the, the game online, and I had it from the uh, the San Francisco 49ers from uh, from their side. Like, their announced team was doing it. That's the one I had, too, yeah. Okay, so you know what I'm going to say. Did you hear the uh, the 40 – they had to tell the story about how Rhett um, got drafted and he was out there on the boathouse – or uh, not on the boathouse, <laughs> but um, – yeah, he got on his boat out, there. Out on the boat, yeah, a boat house. I was thinking uh, that brings back bad memories of Bryant McKinney. And no, no, that's that not talking about that. No, no, that's not not what we were talking about with Brett. But I think it was <laughs> I think it was really cool that uh, that they brought up that story and told that. I did too. I thought that was nice. Uh, the other guy that I really wanted to mention was MBT. MBT. Because we were excited to see him. Now, how did you think he performed? Uh, he looked like a third-string quarterback. I mean, it, it, he he got sacked two times, I want to say. But uh, to his credit, he he moved the ball probably better than what Joe Webb did. Um, he he's got that that arm where you know he can throw it deep down the field. Yeah. Uh, he did he get. Did he throw an interception? I, th I think he threw one. I think one. he threw an interception. So he's got that mentality that kind of comes with having that big arm, is that sometimes he's just going to try to fit one in where it shouldn't be fit in and just get picked off. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he is what he is. <laughs> Here's the thing I loved about him. I, I loved seeing him going out there. You know, completing crisp passes, uh, making reads, even though, let's be honest, his O-line was worse than Joe Webb's. At that point, we had guys in there that, you know, they had just picked up a couple of days before. But um, he made, he had some time. He completed some passes. Um, he completed a nice one, I think, to Alan Reisner. Yeah, he did. And, um, you know, he's one of those guys that, it's so early in his career that if they can get him a, a bigger workload, he might develop into something. You know, he's one of those guys that I'd love to see make the roster. And I'd love to see him work as a third quarterback. And there's no knock on Sage. And I know we talked about it last week, but I I'm really excited to see what he's got in the future. Well, I'm assuming, um, and we'll segue into our, uh, thoughts on the next preseason game here, but I am yep. assuming that since Sage did not play in the first game, that we're going to see him in some game action for the Buffalo Bills late into probably the fourth quarter is when yes. we'll see him come out. So we can maybe compare and contrast a little bit as to what, what Sage is going to do on this coming game and kind of kind of see how he compares to MBT. Right. I'm, I'm interested in seeing that. Um, but now let's take a quick look at the Buffalo Bill game. Um, let's be honest. Uh, people aren't expecting a ton from Buffalo as they were f as uh, the, the 49ers. The 49ers are expected to be you know, a huge team, great defense, uh, all these weapons. The Buffalo Bills aren't that team, but they are a They're a good team, though. Team. They, are, they are definitely a solid team. I would not underestimate the Buffalo Bills at all. 
to me, this is going to be more of the test that you want to see the offense go up against because that San Francisco defense is just too good. Yeah. You know, Buffalo's defense, you know, they've made a couple acquisitions during the offseason and gotten better. But this is a little bit more, I'd say, the Vikings speed because they're just trying to dip their toes in the water. And this is what we want to see. Um, another thing is that Buffalo's offense tends to struggle at times. So this could be a good, another great game for the Vikings defense to try to get things going. Definitely. Okay, here's what I'm looking for in this game. First and foremost, I want to see Christian Ponder find more... Uh, he needs to get into the end zone, for one thing. Right. He needs to score a, touch, a touchdown. Um, and it needs to be not like, oh, we get on the one-yard line and we throw a little quick completed pass off to the side. He, I, I really want to see him just connect with someone a 50-yard pass that goes in for a touchdown <laughs> down the field. That's what we need to see from him. Um, we need to see more of a rapport with Jerome Simpson. Yeah, I'd, I'd even be happy to see him, you know, get a touchdown from maybe 5, 10 yards out. But, yeah, like you said, a one-yard touchdown isn't, you know. That's not really, <laughs> yeah. Um, I've seen good things with Kyle Rudolph. I like the rapport that Ponder had with Kyle Rudolph. I want to see more of that. Um, I want to see some of the other receivers step up in this game. I need to see more from uh, Joe Webb and the second string guys. They need to yeah. step up and they need to move the ball. Uh, we need to see, we'll see more of what the starting defense should look like. I'm assuming Jared Allen, Kevin Williams, Antoine Winfield, that these guys are going to get to see some more game time. I would love that. I'd love to watch them play during the preseason. Yep. So I want to see more what the starting defense is going to look like with those three in it. I want to see Harrison Smith out there with the, the first string starting defense. I want to see okay. Frazier give uh, Blair Walsh an opportunity to hit a really long field goal <laughs> in a game time situation. Um, they had a chance at that this week. Um, instead, they decided to, to punt, and it could have been, I think, a 56-yarder, 50, I think it was. They need to let him do it because it's preseason, and if he hits it, you've given him confidence to say, hey, you made one before, you can do it again. If he misses it, you can say, don't worry about it, it was a insanely long 56 yard field goal right. and, Just it's laughed off and it's only, and it's only preseason it doesn't really matter okay right but I, it's a good test to, to let him see what he can do those are those are a couple of the things that i'm looking forward to all right did you uh, happen to catch the last buffalo preseason game um the one against washington i had caught just a little bit of it um i turned it on on like it was it was way late into the game. When, you turned it off when you saw Rex Grossman, didn't you? Yeah, I, I turned it off when I seen Rex Grossman. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, if you'd have finished watching the game, you'd have saw something uh, really awful from that Bills team. Um, what happened was Vince Young. <laughs> uh, the Buffalo Bills team committed 14 penalties in that game. No kidding. And eight of them were false starts. Ooh. So, you know, when we're complaining about the Vikings preseason, you know, and there's an offsides here or there, just think, hey, you know, at least we didn't do that. Yeah. Because from what I've seen and during that preseason game, the Buffalo Bills have just as much to work out as the Vikings do. So that's one one reason why I really think that this is going to be a really good matchup. Uh, this could be the measuring stick game for the preseason for the Vikings. I mean... You got to take the guys that you're looking at. You got to put them up against competition, um, and you just want to see them butt heads. That's what you want. I think the important thing that Vikings fans should pay attention to going into this game is how well does Leslie Frazier move the pieces around that we've got currently on this roster based on what he's seen in the first preseason game. 
Um, right. We're coming into a season for him in particular where he has to prove that he can be a long-term answer for Minnesota as our head coach. Right. I want to see him make adjustments. I want to see him take some controls. I, I want to see that. I haven't seen that yet. I want to see it. Precisely. I do not want to see him... We're going to start Marcus Sherrills again, and we're going to put Harrison Smith back in, you know, third string defense. Right. It's like, okay, based on the film, should Harrison be playing with the first string guys? Like, I, I want to see him. Is he making decisions based on what we learned in the the first preseason game? Right. Or is he just sticking with the norm and doing what he's comfortable with very true very yep. true yep and that's a that's a good way of things to look for here for the first we, we saw the things in the first preseason game we took a look at them uh, those are some things to take a look at in this next preseason game and i'm sure we'll talk about them uh next week and uh, that, that's the plan. That's what we're going to be doing. Yep. Um, just a quick reminder, you know, we play the Buffalo Bills on August 17th. That's a Friday. It'll be at 7 o'clock p.m. Um, you can listen. The game will be on the, uh, the the radio. Paul Allen does a fantastic job with uh, the Vikings sure play-by-play play crew. Um, so be sure to give the game a watch. And, uh, yeah, I think that'll do it for this week's show. That sure will. Um, I wanted to thank everyone. Once one more time, because um, last week's show has been one of the best listened to shows. Um, we got quite a bit of traffic for it. Um, a lot of people must be telling their friends and telling their friends' friends because last week's show just exploded. And I really appreciate all the attention and all the, you know, telling your friends and everything because it means a lot to me as a Vikings fan, and I'm sure it means a lot to other Vikings fans out there that they know that there's a community for us by us mm -hmm. and I just want to remind one more thing too and that is to stay classy Minnesota